Welcome to Unleashed, the show that explores how to thrive as an independent professional. Unleashed is produced by Umbrex that connects you with the world's top independent management consultants. And I'm your host, Will Bachman. I'm so pleased to be here today with our guest, Oscar Wimshurst, who works at Bench, which is a really cool firm that I just discovered recently. I was searching for information on the Paycheck Protection Program, and they have a fantastic amount of content on that, as well as just how to run a small business. So, Oscar, I'm delighted to have you on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, Bench as and the services you offer, as well as some of the guidance you have um, on dealing with coronavirus. But first, tell us a little bit about yourself and about what Bench does. Sure. Thanks, Will. Um, well, where to start? So, so Bench, we are, believe it or not, even though you hadn't heard of us, we are America's largest bookkeeping service for small businesses. So we work with over 8,000 small business clients, typical business size, anything between sort of naught and four employees. So we kind of really specialize in, in the micro business, if you if you'd call it that. Um, and really, our aim is to kind of take bookkeeping off your hands. So we have a, a almost just, I always like to call it a small army of bookkeepers up at our headquarters. It's not, it's not outsourced or anything like that. And, and really, we, we, we use as much tech as we possibly can to kind of connect directly up to our client's bank statements. Um, but we'll just reconcile your books on a monthly basis, try and make it as hands-free as possible, uh, and help our clients get, get on with just running their business. It's not a, um, a do-it-yourself software, so it's a bit different from your likes of your QuickBooks or your Zeros. Um, it truly is a, it is a service-based business, but just using a, using a software platform. Yeah, so tell us how, how that works, Oscar. So let's take one of our listeners who may have just, uh, let's say they've set up an entity, so they have an LLC, maybe they sure. have no employees, or maybe the person has one employee or two employees, an analysts in the firm. How would working with Bench be different than using QuickBooks? What are, what's the additional services that you would get? You know, just exp- explain to me the process of working with Bench and what you would offer. Yeah. Well, I I always say the first thing here is that I would say probably 75% of our clients used QuickBooks before they came to us. Um, And what we usually hear from them is that QuickBooks can be as kind of um, a good and as easy to use software as possible, but it still requires that kind of manual effort, that little bit of kind of... um, those hours in your week that it takes to do the work, combined with a sort of a base level kind of knowledge of, of where you should be categorizing things and, and so on and so forth. Um, where Bench is different is that we will connect up. Ideally, we'll do it directly, straight to your business bank account so we can draw information in real time. And behind the scenes, while you're getting on with running your business, we'll be just doing those books for you and just checking in with you once a month to make sure everything's accurate, to make sure we've got things, got the, the expenses categorized in the right way. And then on top of that, we'll actually prepare a sort of a real-time cash flow analysis in an app that you can look through. So you can look through on a, on a daily, almost on an hourly basis, and just kind of see what, where your cash position is, where you're spending your money, and kind of get real-time insights into your, into your business's health. Okay, so um, that is one thing I hear from independent consultants <clears throat> who use QuickBooks. A lot of it is automated. It you know connects to your credit card and to your bank, but you still yeah. ha- you know. And once you've categorized, let's say Uber as a taxi expense, it will recognize any future Uber as a taxi expense. But still, the first time you do go to any vendor, you have to kind of go in there and classify. Okay, this was a restaurant. This was an airplane ticket. You know, or this was a hotel. Um, the first time you have any vendor, and there can be a pretty long tail of vendors, so that can take a, bun- a bunch of time. Uh, and then it's not the most friendly in terms of showing you your current cash position or your cash flow. Um, so it sounds like your team would, you know, get logins or somehow get plugged into, you know, the business's accounts, and then uh, so you're not like sort of riding on top of QuickBooks, you have your own software solution that you're using. Yeah, yeah, we, we, exactly. We've got our own proprietary software, and you're exactly right. We'll get third-party logins to pretty much everything that, 
that your clients or your sort of audience's business will use to run their business. And then we'll just pull that information ourselves. If we do ever need any input from clients, we'll be proactive in asking for it. But it's really truly designed to be just a completely hands-off experience in getting your bookkeeping done. Okay. Now what about, um, so that helps with all pulling in all the expenses. What about, say, preparing invoices? Um, In some cases, you know, different clients may require you know, different things on the invoice. Someone wants a PO number. Someone else wants this kind of payment information. Someone else wants, you know, oh, please list all, you know, the day's work, the hour's work, the fixed price. So sometimes invoices for consultants require some customization. Is that a service that you provide? Is that like just add on additional or t- tell me about the invoicing process? Well, at the moment, we'll, our, our philosophy is just do one thing and do it really well. And that's the bookkeeping. Um, for invoicing, we work with a fantastic partner. So we work with FreshBooks, um, and that's who we kind of recommend for all our clients to take care of their invoices. It's not something that we do ourselves. Okay, so you're you're doing the bookkeeping, and then the sort of the actual um, accountancy part of the tax accounting part. Uh, sound, do you do that part, or do you say you know? We, well, go ahead. we do, yeah. So so we have a um, we have a, a service called Bench Tax where we will um, do the tax prep and, and the tax filing for you. Um, we also work kind of really well with whoever your kind of audience uses. If they have a CPA that they use and they're happy using, at the end of every year, we'll kind of export all the kind of year's financials as well as an annual um, P&L and an annual um, income statement, and sorry, and an annual balance sheet, and we'll get that sent over to your CPA. So everything's kind of, everything's right there, ready, ready for tax season. Okay, got it. Um, and I imagine that when you first start working with someone, do you uh, come up with a? How do you come up with the chart of accounts of figuring out for that particular business how you know the expenses should be structured and organized? Yeah. So that that's twofold. The first is through a detailed discovery with the client. So anyone that anyone that kind of expresses interest in in bench and kind of signs up through our website, they'll get a detailed discovery call with a member of our sort of uh, our inbound sales team. Um, as part of that process, every um, prospective client will get a free trial of Bench. Um, so what that means is we'll, we'll kind of gather all the statements and connect to the bank accounts that we need to in order to do one month of bookkeeping for them completely for free. And typically we'll turn around that month of bookkeeping in 24 hours and we'll get back on the phone with them the next day just to run them through the chart of accounts, how it's set up, make any amendments that, that we've been asked to, um, and make sure that the client knows exactly sort of the deliverables that we're producing before, before they kind of agree to, to press the button, as it were. All right. Um, tell me a little bit about the, 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 the pricing structure that you charge. Sure. It's, um, it's all... I would before I kind of go into it, I would all, I would always say it's it's all very kind of clear and above board, and it's on our website. If you go to bench.co forward slash pricing, it's all there, and we just charge kind of flat monthly rates per month of bookkeeping. There's no add-ons or extras or anything like that, and we we work out exactly um, how much to charge based on the average monthly expense level, so dollar value, uh, and prices per month start as little as low as 139 a month. Okay, great. So if you want to check out the uh, current pricing for your size of business, you can go to bench.co slash pricing. Uh, what right. about security? So, you know, folks handing over their logins to their banks and credit cards and all that, how do you, um, how do you handle that? Well, I mean, we use, we use bank-grade security. So it is, um, it's just the same as, as, I use, as is used by... Um, by your kind of audience, mainstream banks, um, it, everything's kind of end-to-end encrypted. So we are we're super secure, and nothing's outsourced. All our all our sort of staff are all um, all hired in house. So yeah, we take security very seriously. All right, great. Um, so as I mentioned before, when we started the call, I discovered your firm, and you know, I feel you know a little bit foolish g- given you know what a big business you are and how many. You're the yep. biggest, you know, bookkeeping firm in the U.S. Um, I, I admit I hadn't hadn't heard of Bench, but um, you're doing a fantastic job of content creation and content marketing. 
obviously, because you were at the top of the Google search results uh, with <laughs> with my query about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, I'd like to get a little bit into your advice around just the, you know, that's coronavirus specific. But before we do that, yeah. tell me a little bit about, it looks like you have a wealth of information in there for small businesses. Tell me a little bit about your content creation strategy and the types of information that uh, someone could find on your website. Well, I mean, the, the strategy in, in today's world is, is totally different from normal. Um, you know, in, in a kind of, in 2019's world, our content creation strategy is, is developed by kind of groups of people sitting around figuring out, you know, trying to figure out what's important to our clients, whether or not that's a list of tax deductions that might be available at tax time or, or how to, what's the advantages of QuickBooks versus Excel or things like that. In, in the kind of current climate that's just a complete, you know, sea change, our content is actually largely client driven and and the kind of the reason I say that is that our client base, that kind of naught to four employees, local businesses, are like an amazing barometer for what's going on with the economy. Often often before you read about it. Um, if we noticed that you know, we noticed two or three weeks ago that clients were inquiring about how they could use Bench to to help with these disaster loan applications and we're like, right, we've got to get some stuff out on this. Um, and so we pivoted pretty quickly to actually repurposing, um, uh, repurposing a whole group of um, of staff to become full time research analysts on this on this topic, um, and actually pouring through all the primary resources, all the Treasury guidance, SBA guidance, and just pumping out as much information we could that we be thought would be useful to our client base based on what they were asking us. And even now, we're having daily webinars with our sort of and with for all of our clients that they can they can join. And we're looking through the Q and A and thinking about what do people need? Is it? And if we think there's a trend towards people asking about how the PPP affects them as a self-employed individual, we will try and you know be as agile as possible and get content out as quickly as quickly as. Um, so in this environment, you know, it's completely what we're seeing from our client base. Okay, that's great. Um, so for, you know, a lot of broad based useful information there, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the, um, content you've been publishing around, um, how to deal with the coronavirus impact. Um, what have some, what have some of the more, um, more popular articles been that you have? Maybe tell us some of the, the things that have really resonated with the audience. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd say sort of, um, Earlier on, we produced a few sort of um, a few more generic articles, which which performed really well. And they were things like we've got a an article called "Getting Through COVID-19: A Financial Game Plan for Small Businesses," um, and that's a lot broader, which is sort of things like implementing emergency budgets, getting low interest loans, um, seeing what programs are available to you. This is before a lot of the um, a lot of the sort of the CARES Act and other related SBA programs came out. So there was a few more. I'm just kind of scanning through our um, our library now, and there was another one, six six steps to take if COVID-19 shuts down your business. So there's a lot of general stuff which has been um, really well received. However, I mean, in terms of in terms of performance, in terms of what people are searching for and reading, the two, or I suppose the three real stands out standouts are what's the Paycheck Protection Program, so a simple guide. Um, we've also got one on self-employment and the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, and then actually in the, in the last, I mean, giving you the most up-to-date information, um, we actually have an article all about the unemployment benefits and how that has changed as a result of, the, of COVID-19. And that's getting a huge amount of traction just today. Yeah, that is a big uh, question mark that a lot of folks have. Normally, of course, independent consultants, contractors, self-employed are not eligible for unemployment. Tell us what yeah. you've learned and what, you know, what are some of the key points in that piece about unemployment insurance for self-employed? How does that work? Does, it, does, your, does your revenue have to go to zero? How do you qualify for it? Is it state by state? What, what, what are some of the key findings there? Well, you're going to have to give me a second as I'm going to get it up in front of me. Oh, Please sure. bear with me. And while, while, while Oscar's pulling that up, I'll just mention that we will include, obviously, we'll include the links to these articles that he's mentioned in the show notes. So 
I'll include that link to this unemployment piece that he's pulling up if you want to read the full piece, as well as to the most recent posts on the Paycheck Protection Program. And uh, so, and we'll because that that's that's uh, what we're hearing from independent consultants. We just held a webinar today for Umbrex and Veritex members. Is that you know the guidelines are evolving, and a lot of different banks are taking different approaches. Some banks require you have a checking account with them. Some banks require a checking account, and you already have a loan with them. Some banks are saying, you know, we'll take new new customers. So uh, there's a, it's important to uh, apply quickly before the funds run out for those programs, and um, it, you know, just sort of sorting out how much you're eligible for and how the forgiveness works. Um, a, a lot to learn there. Well, thank you very much for giving me that breathing room. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you bet, Oscar. We're doing this like basically almost live here, unedited. So yeah. go ahead. So I've been scrambling in the background to get it open. And um, really, it's, again, as with all of our, um, all of our articles, they're designed to be as kind of broad as possible while including as much specific information as we can without making it too targeted. Um, so in this article, we give a kind of a, a, a breakdown of how the CARES Act has, has affected the existing unemployment, um, the unemployment benefits program. So the additional $600 a week is the, uh, is the real headline there as well as an additional 13 weeks of unemployment benefits. Um, but the third key point, as I'm scanning through it, is that the, the pandemic unemployment assistance provision actually has expanded the program to apply to a whole bunch of people that wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise apply, as you were mentioning. So now self-employed individuals, independent contractors, all find themselves actually eligible for unemployment benefits. So that's a question that a lot of our clients are having to ask themselves is, is looking at all these different programs available, which, which route makes the most sense for me to go down. Makes sense. Okay, well, so I'll include a link to that article, Oscar, um, as well as to those other pieces that you mentioned. Um, mm. So, and I'm sure you guys are going to continue to uh, produce a lot of content related to this. Um, it's, you know, I, I was impressed at the comprehensiveness of it. I found your article on the Paycheck Protection Program uh, the day after it was passed by Congress or like the morning after it was passed by Congress yeah. the night before. So it sounds like you really have people working uh, 24 seven on looking at the latest information and, and making it available for your customers as well as it's obviously a great uh, customer acquisition tool. Um, you know, it's a, you know, it's a double edged sword because um, the, the, the kind of downside of being so responsive is that we found that a lot of what we write can be obsolete in, in a matter of hours. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got people that are even updating these things two, three times a day. So we're doing our best to be kind of finger on the pulse. Um, we just like everybody else, we face the challenge of sometimes um, differing information from different, even different government bodies. But we're doing our best to kind of work through the noise. Yeah, it's evolving. So. We're talking here on Wednesday, April 8th. What have you heard so far in terms of businesses uh, applying for the Paycheck Protection Program? Have you heard any businesses that have actually received disbursements yet? Have you heard of any, um, you know, you know, any kind of uh, perspective on how that process is going for businesses and guidance that you're giving out? We've, we've had none yet in terms of, of disbursements. Um, that would be, it'd be news to me um, in terms of, I mean, I'm not saying that none of our clients haven't received the money yet, but I just, nothing's come across, come across my desk. Um, you know, what we've seen is that a lot of our clients are finding this process a lot easier than they thought it might be. Um, and even when, you know, an interesting point on this is that the guidance from the, from the treasury and even on the, on the actual application form itself is that, um, the self-employed and independent contractors should wait until the 10th of April to actually apply for these loans. Now, I think that, the, and when, uh, sorry, and just to add on to that, is that sole proprietors, according to that um, program, can apply as of April the 3rd. Now, I think that the line and the distinction there between sole proprietors and self-employed and, and independent contractors is kind of blurry enough for I think our kind of, you know, what we're kind of leaning towards saying to people is just, just apply, just go and apply. Um, cause chances are 
that your bank or your community bank are going to look at you and probably qualify you as a sole proprietor anyway. So if you're hanging around waiting for the 10th of April, the worst that they can tell you is to come back in two days, so you might as well apply. Fantastic. So, uh, Oscar, uh, I think we mentioned your website a couple times, and we'll include a link in the show notes. Yep. Um, I want to thank you for you know agreeing to hop on this call really quickly, and so we could get this you know information out there. And uh, thanks so much for joining today. Not at all. And yes, if, if anyone if anyone wants any more information, we've got a whole team of people fielding calls from from clients, from people out there who are just reading our information. So. We're always at the other end of the phone. If anyone needs to get their books in order just to apply for these loans, then, yeah, do reach out. But thanks very much, Will. I've really, really enjoyed it. Fantastic. I'm glad that you mentioned that last point. Oscar, thank you for joining today. No problem. Thank you.